Hello and welcome for the lightning talk about ESP32 family uh, support status on Zephyr. My name is Ricardo Tafas. I am a software manager at Expressive. So this is a um, small excerpt from an interview that our CEO Tio Suyan gave to EE Times uh, regarding his experience with Expressive. And this particular uh, excerpt is about what he thinks regarding open source projects and how is his feeling uh, towards open source uh, software, especially projects. This one is a testimonial from Ivan, our VP of software platforms on our website, on uh, People Expressive page, more exactly, regarding his feeling and what brought him to Expressive related to open source and what, of course, what he thinks a little bit about uh, open source. So why all these testimonials and comments uh, are important? Well, as everyone knows, Pressive already is participant of the open source movement. We do have our tool, the ESP IDF, which is open sourced. Um, it's our flagship, usually what we tell customers and so far what we have been uh, offering to customers to develop with, with our devices is ESP-IDF. As everyone knows, ESP-IDF is a package which contains an operating system and some libraries, some applications, some build structure where users can start building their own application. It's shared on GitHub, it's open source, everyone can go there, contribute and, and uh, take a look on how we do things. But this is still something a little bit different from a regular open source experience as you, we, we understand it because it's controlled by Expressive, it's open source, everyone can copy on it, but it kinds of on Expressive's uh, control and repositories, it's on our on, on Expressive's GitHub account. So um, eventually uh, the company decided to move forward to, to, to get more on open source. And instead of owning the project, like we do with the ESP IDF, we decided that, well, maybe it's time for us to contribute to third party projects. And based on that, on April, 2020, the third party frameworks group was created and currently the projects that this group which I happen to manage have is Nutix, Zephyr and MCU Boot. Um, we're based mostly in Campinas but we do have a lot of collaboration with other expressive teams on Brno, Pune and Shanghai and we do have some people working remotely on other places as well. Um, on Africa and uh, several other countries in Europe. Currently available for production, Expressive offers ESP32, ESP32 S2, and just recently ESP32 C3. But our current support status on Zephyr is that we are only supporting ESP32. So what we mean about uh, regarding support? Well, uh, when we started this project, we had to set some goals. So we first things first, the CPU, without the CPU supported, there is nothing that we can do. So first things first, we had to add a lot of energy and su supporting the CPU. Uh, second to that, a Wi-Fi MCU that does not does Wi-Fi, that usually has very little differentiation from other regular MCUs. So Wi-Fi and Bluetooth were mandatory, second thing to support. After that, some basic peripherals, of course, uh, serial port is, was uh, very basic, needed for the CPU support, but then we have uh, SPI, I2C, um, and other basic uh, 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 peripherals. After that, uh, whatever is regarding product capabilities, regarding updates, um, low power, security features. 
and after that the uh, least used uh, peripherals um, that usually uh, are not uh, as common uh, used on products as um, the above. Since it was a past goal, the current status for the SP32 is that we have uh, a lot of peripherals supported. Some of them will have to refactor, for example, the IRQ, which is meant for being uh, refactored. Um, I square C on the same situation. We do support Wi Fi, but we don't currently have the Zephyr native stack, so we're not supporting it because it doesn't exist yet. But uh, we do have some operational Wi Fi subsystem. Um, on the same fashion as the IRQ, we have the PWM. We do have uh, Watchdog, RTC, and partially we do support the uh, SMP. Um, there are some things that we do have uh, quite some lot of work or for a full and, and regular support. I've just mentioned the Wi-Fi, but we do have dynamic frequency scaling and our ULP support. Um, how we're going to add that into Zephyr build system, if that's going to be possible, so it's something that we have to work on the future. So, what are our current goals? Because everything that we've been talking is something that already happened. Um, first, it's important to support all the SOCs uh, that are currently available for production. Um, after supporting the CPU, uh, second thing is uh, they are all Wi-Fi MCU, so we, we do have to support Wi-Fi on them. Bluetooth when available. Um, second thing, we do need some um, over-the-air updates and imaging capability and image handling capabilities. So MCU boot starts to become a must on all of these uh, devices. I've just said it, uh, MCU boot is necessary for image handling. Why would someone need to handle images? Most likely for update purposes. And of course, security, which is always a hot topic, is always something that's left uh, aside. And of course, we first need to have some system and then we have to secure that system. So that's our current goals. With all of that current goals in mind, so what we're currently doing for ESP32, we're currently working on MCU boot. We're still working on some over the air update and over uh, update system. We are also working on the IRQ and I2C refactoring. And we aim to start working on hardware cryptography support on Q4 uh, this year. As for ESP32S2, um, on the very same fashion that we did with regular ESP32, first things first, CPU support, along with CPU support, UART support, so we need a console to at least see what's happening. After that, SPI, all modes for SPI, uh, SPI flash and, and user SPI, I2C, IRQ, and of course, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Once the CPU is working and we do have a basic set of peripherals, it's a Wi-Fi MCU after all, so it, it's mandatory. And uh, in the end, GPIO. Um, For ESP32C3, not very different from ESP32 and ESP32S2. First things first, always CPU support, UART, SPI, I2C, IRQ, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, and GPIO. The very same set of peripherals that we understand are very basic. And if we do get all of this working, someone can build some basic uh, IoT application with it. Okay then, what's next? What comes up next? The question that we get the most is, well, you, you guys have ESP32S3 coming up, you have C6 coming up, are you going to support it? So yes, we are going to support future chips. We came to stay, so there are uh, not only these, but everything else that's going to come. I just want to get some reminder that our support starts with ESP-IDF, it's our flagship tool. So every device gets supported on it first and eventually 
we get its libraries and low-level APIs, and we, we review them to use on other OSs. So when that's uh, our uh, Zephyr support for these devices supposed to happen well, um, late Q4 or early Q1, when we get a, a stable support on IDF, then we start uh, our support on Zephyr as well. So with ESP32 C6 and S3 out of the way, um, yes, we're going to keep to support future ESP32 family devices. Um, it's also our goal to improve the reliability of the regular ESP32 on Zephyr. And after, after that, then we move to C3, then to S2, then to C6, then to S3, and not necessarily in this order, but eventually Every time we, we add some uh, device to Zephyr, the idea is that to improve support on that device and eventually get all prefers covered. Uh, so this is uh, one part of our goal. And also to be uh, to collaborate with the community and not only be submitting support for our devices, but maybe add the newer subsystem as we see fit. So what we are doing in this community front? Of course, there are lots of things that are under study. So we do have dynamic frequency scaling. The ESP32 family supports that. And we do have that operation on ESP IDF. Uh, it's made for free RTOS, but well, can we make it better than uh, IDF's version? Can we copy something from it to uh, accelerate that implementation? Also, we do have the Zephyr on chip Wi-Fi native stack integration. So we're still using our version of Wi-Fi, but we would like to collaborate with the community to get it into a more general approach. We also saw MCU Manager as an interesting project. We're still looking at it. We're still studying it. Um, also, we heard a lot about Update Hub. Seems to us that it's a great service. After we get MCU Boot working, it should be fairly easy for non-expressive to support Update Hub on ESP32. And we also have ESP Rainmaker, which is our own cloud services that they do have some update uh, service there as well. So eventually, if we make it easier, uh, if we port uh, ESP Rainmaker um, to Zephyr, it might make it easier for Rainmaker users to adopt Zephyr as well. So to summarize, we have been busy, and as you could see on our roadmaps, uh, we will keep busy. And we do have a lot of expectation, and, and we do hope to add even more efforts to Zephyr project. So thank you everyone for joining this lightning presentation. And please stay tuned uh, on our GitHub, or Zephyr GitHub, about expressives and support on ESP32. Bye-bye.